Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I've got a 100 day check-in. Yes, it's the 100th day of 2024 if you didn't know. So I wanted to share with you a few updates. First of all, if you watched my video earlier this year, I did say that I was implementing a 30-30 rule for myself. You guys might remember I said anything that is an unplanned purchase or it's not a replacement of an item that I need, then it would have to be under $30 for me to be able to buy it immediately. If it were over $30, then I would have myself wait 30 days to give myself time to sort of slow down and evaluate the purchase decision before taking the leap. So for the first about 90 days or so, I was very successful in doing that. I only surpassed the $30 mark for essential items, for gifts for others, and for real placement items. So things like beauty items that I had run out of, you know, my favorite Tatcha items. I did purchase those even though those were over $30 because I needed to replace them. But for anything else that was unplanned, kind of spontaneous or impulsive that was over $30, I would typically take a screenshot or a photo of the item and then wait. And in a previous video I did share there were like seven or eight items that I actually just passed on. I was excited about them initially, but then I decided after 30 days, I was over it, I was desensitized, and the excitement had worn off, so I saved my money and just decided not to make those purchases. But we are now in April, so it's been four months, and I did actually break my 30-30 rule. You guys know I was traveling for a bit with my family. We were in Switzerland. I didn't really buy much there, but then we went to Milan, and I did buy some jewelry from Swarovski and a Prada bag from... Prada, obviously, and those were all over $30 and I certainly did not give myself 30 days to contemplate. So I was traveling and I guess I thought of it as sort of an exception to the rule and I don't feel bad about it, but I did want to double back and just share my thoughts because I didn't want you to think that I was being sort of flippant about the rule that I had created for myself. I don't want to be really strict in restricting myself. I don't like that feeling, but I did implement this practice for this year to help me to be more mindful and to really just be thorough with my purchase decisions. So I did make some purchases in Milan that I'm happy about. I'll show you if you missed my original unboxing. This cutie here, a Prada nylon bucket bag in the navy color and I've already worn it out and I think it's adorable and it's something that I wanted. I wanted Prada nylon and I wanted it something specifically from Prada this time. So it was sort of planned but not exactly because it wasn't this exact item that I had in mind. I was just kind of open-ended when I walked into Prada that day. So yeah, this is the bag and then you guys know I picked up a few goodies from Swarovski. This ring here that I'm wearing, which I love. And then I also got a little necklace for my daughter, which doesn't count because gifts and purchases for other people don't count within my 3030. The 3030 is really for me to be kind of observant of my own shopping behaviors towards myself. But these are the little moon earrings that I got. So adorable. And they come apart so the moon can be taken out and worn without a little dangly piece and so they can turn into little miniature hoops. I love this. I think it's adorable. It's really fun. And then the necklace that I got for my daughter is this little clover. So I did sort of break my own rules. I shouldn't do air quotes because they really did. I broke my own rules. It was not the 30 day period. And then before I went on my travels, I also bought these YSL sneakers, which I am obsessed with. They're so comfortable and I wore them all throughout our trip recently. As you can see, they're dirty now. And one of you asked me, did this fall within the 30-30 rule? So here's the thing, in addition to my 30-30, I've also been creating lists. So I created these lists back in January, I believe, or maybe at the end of December. Lists of items that I wanted to add to my wardrobe and list of no-buy items that I was restricting myself from buying because in most cases I already have duplicates or I have too many that I don't need anymore or I just know I don't need them, period. So this, pair of sneakers, this exact pair of sneakers was not on the list, but I did put a pair of sneakers, like any pair of sneakers, because I wear sneakers almost every day. It's my most worn type of shoe, and I wear through my sneakers fairly quickly because I walk a lot, and so 
I knew I was gonna get another pair of sneakers. This was that pair, and so I will not be getting any more sneakers this year. In fact, I went to the Converse store recently, got some customized sneakers for my daughter, and I was so tempted to get another pair of Converse for myself. I already have Converse sneakers. I'm a big Converse fan, have been for years, but I was tempted to get another pair for myself in black and customize it because it's so fun. They have that feature down in the Soho location, but I remember my 3030, and I wasn't there to buy something for myself. I specifically went there to take my daughter and her friend there. And so I didn't buy those Converse sneakers for myself. And because I already got these sneakers, I'm just gonna take my time. Maybe in 30 days time, I will revisit and get myself those black pair of Converse sneakers. But it's also very possible that by the time 30 days is up, I will be over it and just appreciating the sneakers that I already have. So we'll see. I also recently bought this beautiful cardigan from Aritzia and I was so happy to share it in my recent video. I am very focused on bringing in specific pieces for my wardrobe, sort of to refresh my wardrobe. I've been um, very thoughtful about letting go of clothing items and then only sort of strategically bringing in new items that will round out my wardrobe and I've been doing this for years so that's why I haven't really shared a lot about clothing on this channel because a lot of my clothes are old. I've been wearing them for years and I haven't bought a lot of new pieces to share. But this year I will be focusing more on clothes because I'm just in that season where I feel like my wardrobe needs a little bit of a refresh so I'm excited to explore what types of clothing and brands and you know styles and materials are out there that I can add to my closet. So this also technically broke the 30-30 rule but because I planned from the start to keep an eye out for good key clothing pieces, I feel good about this purchase as well as the other clothing that I purchased recently. So it's sort of a combination of my no buy list, my sort of wish list, if you will call it, and the 30-30. So it's all meant to just kind of help me step away and really think through my decisions. This, although I did not wait 30 days, I knew I wanted something like this and I'm so happy with it. So let me know if that's helpful because I've been getting some questions about like, am I still keeping up with my 30-30? Um, do I have a no buy list? What else will I be buying? So it, again, it's sort of like a work in progress for me. Also, I know that Sephora is having their major sale at the moment. I definitely want to take advantage of that sale, but I don't want to go overboard because in previous years I would just buy up everything I knew I liked like all of my favorites but I would have existing products still unused so that would then turn into like excess inventory and just me feeling overwhelmed because even beauty products do expire so you kind of want them to be bought semi-fresh but I am going to pick up a few items because as you can see this one here is nearly down to the end so I need to replenish and anything that is a replacement of products that I typically use is excluded from my 30-30 rule. This is my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. I've been using this for over 15 years. I don't use foundation because I find it to be really cakey and heavy and doesn't let my skin breathe, but I love Tinted Moisturizer because it gives a little bit of that shading and this gives a glow, so I love it. And it has SPF 25. Of course, I put stronger SPF under, but it's nice to have that extra built-in um, protection just in case I forget or I get lazy. So this one I wear in the porcelain color. I'm going to pick this up during the sale and you guys know I've been raving about this all winter and even though it's warming up now and it's not as dry, I'm still grabbing this. So I just like spray this all over my face and it feels good, it smells good, it's light, refreshing, but also it just makes my skin more dewy. I'm the kind of person that doesn't like the dry skin look, like the powdery look. I want the dewy, kind of right out of the shower, moist look. I don't know if that sounds strange, but, and I tend to have drier skin, so I love products like this. And I even took this with me on my travel, sprayed it on the flight because the airplane air is so dry. So this is, as you can see, about a third left. So I know I'm gonna work my way through this. I will pick up another one to replenish. Now this is an all-time favorite of mine. It's the Dewy Skin Moisturizer from Tatcha. But I have quite a bit left because I just bought this a couple months ago. So as tempted as I am to get the discount, I'm not going to buy another one of these until I'm closer to being finished. 
And then the last thing I will get though is this right here from Caudalie. It is the Vino Pure Serum. It's the Skin Perfecting Serum. I got this as a sample and I brought this with me on our trip to Switzerland and Italy. I use it every single day because it's a little travel size and I thought I don't want to bring my larger serum that I have from a different brand. I loved it. At first I thought my skin was looking extra good because I was on vacation and I was well rested and I was enjoying myself and I wasn't tired. But when I came back home, I kept using this and I realized it was this. So I stopped using this for a few days and I noticed a difference. So I'm going to get the full size bottle of this. So you can see I used the sample all the way down to here. It's almost done. I'm going to save this little bit for my next trip since I'm heading back out to Europe in a couple of weeks. This will be just enough for the four or five days that I'm there, but I will get the full size bottle during the sale because I'm now a believer of this. So if you're interested, it just, I don't know, it made my skin feel very like pulled together, not tight, but sort of snatched, if you know what I mean, just like, t yeah, a little tighter. I don't know. Like now that I'm in my forties, I love the tightening effect and it's supposed to also keep your skin really clear. Um, I don't have acne, but I have sometimes my pores, you know, are pronounced sometimes. Like if my skin gets dry, my pores are too visible to my liking. And this had the effect of diminishing my pores. So I love that as well. So I'll pick this up. I feel like I'm giving you a full report of everything that I'm, I'm buying and what I've bought, but yeah, I guess I am doing that. I want to hold myself accountable to what I shared earlier this year about being more mindful and slowing down and the 30-30. And I don't want to just put stuff like that out there and then all of a sudden just pivot and do something else. So I guess I wanted to explain to you how I'm going about all of this. And I also want you all to keep me honest. So because I got this bag, I am going to do a one in one out and I'm going to let go of another bag. The bag that I'm going to let go is my Polen bag. If you remember, I had several Polen bags that I did full honest reviews on and then I did giveaways and I gave a lot of the Polen bags away and this was the last one, is the last one, that I have. Oh my goodness. Cutie little dumpling, Polen numero Nuf mini, the number nine mini. And I did so many videos on this, the pros, the cons, it's adorable. The strap also comes off. You can carry it handheld. I did that and I also did this and I did crossbody. Um, I enjoyed this bag for a while, but I have more bags that I need, more bags than I'd like. Sometimes I just feel like I need to keep it tight. Because I got this one, I know it's different. It's Prada, it's nylon, it's bucket. This is none of those things. This is grained leather. It's black. This is navy. Right, it's a totally different look, but they both kind of have that mini little dumpling effect in my eyes. They both have the top handle. They're both kind of on the smaller side. This one also comes with a crossbody strap, just like this does. So to make space, and I don't have a lot of space. I have a small closet in a New York City apartment. So that's another reason why I keep it as tight as possible. I don't like clutter and I don't like things spilling out of my closet. So. This Prada bag is going to take the space of the Polen bag. So it's going to be swapped out. I'm going to let this go. I already asked someone at my church on Sunday if she was interested in this bag and she said yes. So there's this girl who's about 10 years younger than me, super sweet. She teaches in the classes at church, like the children's ministry. And I noticed she has some nice bags and she's really into handbags. So it's like this kindred spirit, right? And I asked her, do you like Polen? And she knew immediately, yes, I love Polen. She knew it was a Parisian brand. And I said, I have a bag that I'm ready to let go. Would you want it? And I showed her a picture and she got so excited. So it just makes me so happy to know that she will use it and she will enjoy it and she will get, you know, excitement out of it. Just like I did when I used it for the past, what, like a year or two. So it's in great condition. As you can see. And so I'm going to be passing this along to her next week. So one for one, one in, one out. Let me know what you guys think of my decision and if you think it's practical or if it's silly. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm being too strict with myself, but this time I feel that it just works. It makes sense because I don't need both. 
Some of you have asked me, well, many of you have asked me how my Chanel Deauville is holding up and specifically you wanted to know about the corners and also about um, lint and just sort of pilling and things sticking to this fabric. So I'm going to show you the corners look great. Now I know it's tricky with a fabric bag. It's not like leather or even like nylon is different, but this is really fabric. It's like a mixed material. And there's a little bit of lint as you can see, but considering this is a black fabric bag, I don't feel like a whole lot of lint sticks to it. And this is super sunny, so you would see everything like exaggerated and pronounced. But there's just like little, little bits, that's it. Corners are not worn. There's no feet on the bottom, but I don't find any issue with that. And this is what it looks like on the back. Some of you asked me specifically about the back because this is where the rubbing happens against our body or against our clothes. But as you can see, there's no issue, no pilling. I have no issues. I like this bag so much more than I ever expected. I was definitely hesitant about getting a fabric bag, but I like this bag so much, you guys. I feel like it's just so easy. I travel with it. I run around, do errands with it. It's bigger. I have my Zumoni organizer insert, the thicker one, which gives it structure and shape. I have a Zumoni uh, promo code as well down below. I think it's 20% off, so if you want to save money. This, to me, is a must, the organizer insert, because without it, it is floppy really floppy and I guess you know some people might not mind that but I really prefer a little bit more structure so it doesn't fall around and there's also this as well a little pouch which is a nice bonus so I'm still really really happy with my Deauville I did so many videos on it showing what fits inside and also the size comparisons because I had to do a whole investigation on this oops on the sizes because Chanel tags are not very descriptive on the sizes, nor are they very accurate. But anyway, really happy with my Deauville. So I want to update you on that. All right, and then this 100 day check-in is turning out to be like an update of all kinds of random things. Some of you asked about lambskin color transfer, especially on this lighter caramel bag. Lambskin, no corner wear. This bag is a couple of years old now from the 21p collection there is no color transfer i do not wear this with any new dark denims that you know are still needing to be washed out in case of bleeding but i've worn it with black i wear black all the time black coats black jeans black pants black sweaters and as you can see hopefully you can see the sun's coming in really strong my way so i can't really see the screen very well but hopefully you can see there's no color transfer to note and the same with this one, which is even lighter. So this is my Chanel Mini Square in the gold, also from the 21P collection, and nothing. No color transfer, no corner wear. Now, when I bought this, my essay said that eventually I might see some rubbing off of this because it's like this metallic finish over lambskin, but so far, I don't see any problems with it. So I want to update you on that. Some of you have been asking about my Ateliers Auguste because this is also a cream colored light bag, no color transfer. I wear it with all different colors. Again, I just am careful not to wear new dark denims. But that's pretty much it. Love it, it's one of three. I have three of these mini Monceau bags from Ateliers Auguste. So I've got to figure that out too. I don't think I need all three, but I love this one. And here is another bag that I've had for a little while. It's newer. This was a gift from Jack Gome, which is a Paris-based brand. Beautiful Napa leather. I talked about how it's like this big messenger sling bag, which is great for working out, running errands, and also for travel. So no color transfer. I've worn this with a black sweatshirt. Um, it's fine with jeans, no issue. So I want to show you that as well. And some of you have been asking about my APC bags. So my APC Grace Baguette, I have let go. I, if, I let that go a few months ago. I think it was at the tail end of last year. I let go of like seven or eight bags because I was just tightening up. And 
Um, I noticed that the Grace Baguette, as beautiful as it was and as well made as it was, I found that I didn't need two of the exact same color. So this is also from APC and this is the same sort of like mahogany brown, beautiful, beautiful shade. And this is a bucket bag. And so I just had to choose between the two and I decided to keep this one. But it's fairly similar, I think, in leather. And I will tell you, for those of you who asked me um, about how it holds up the scratches and stuff, and someone asked me recently how the APC Grace Baguette compares to the Celine Classic box bag, because I did do that comparison. The Celine Classic box bag that I have has no really no scratches on it. This one here, you can see a little bit of marking and a, a little scratch there. I don't know how that happened, but I will say, surprisingly, this leather on the APC is more prone to scratches than the shiny box leather on my Celine Classic box bag. So I don't know if that's helpful. But then again, this is not the APC Grace Baguette bag. It feels kind of like the same leather, but I can't guarantee it is. I'm not sure if I'm comparing apples to oranges, but I thought I would just give you an update on the bucket bag nonetheless. And hopefully it's helpful, but I really do like this bag. Oh, you know what? The scratch is here. I'm sorry. So here there's just little marks and this one little nick here. But on the back there's a scratch. I don't know how that happened. Right there. So you can see underneath it's a lighter color. So if this scratch was on the front of the bag, it would probably bug me. But it's on the back. And there's no scratches on the bottom, which is a surprise. So I do think this was some kind of accident. I must have rubbed against something without realizing it. All right. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. I did do a whole video on my discovery of the brand Demelier London, and I was really, really intrigued by the midi size New York tote. And then there's the full size original New York tote. But I really like that sort of like tulip opening, the shape of it, the silhouette. And I shared in a vlog, I went to Saks to check it out. It was completely sold out. I couldn't see any in person. I did see the Demelier Tokyo tote and then some other styles, but not the New York tote that I was looking for. So I still haven't had a chance to see that bag in person. And I see that the color that I really wanted, which was the mocha color, is completely sold out and it looks like has been discontinued because the option is not even there on the Demelier website. And I can't find it anywhere on you know, Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, it's nowhere to be found. So I do realize that they cycle through colors. They have the mocha brown and the suede, but I really wanted the leather because then I can wear it all, like through all the seasons. And suede to me is more fall, winter. So I've been debating, a few of you have reached out asking me, will I be getting a bag? I have been debating and I'm not sure which color I would choose as a second choice to the mocha. I kind of feel like I'm settling, which I don't like that feeling. And I don't feel any rush to get the bag, except that I do want to review it for you guys. So I'm torn between whether or not I should get the cream like off-white color or just the black color, which I think is on back order until summertime. But I do notice that they do these collabs with certain like big influencers or celebrities. And when they do the collabs, they release different colors in limited batches. And so I wonder if a really pretty color will come out at some point later this year. And then maybe I could just keep my eyes open and snatch one of those up versus settling for something that I'm not like super, super excited about because I don't really need another black bag. And as you can see, I have more cream colored bags now in my collection than before. So I kind of want something different. The other thing I'm debating is I don't wear or carry my Birkin all that much. I have confessed to this in the past and I don't know if it's because it's the Birkin and it's kind of attention grabbing, but I think mainly it's because it's this sort of handle, crook of the arm, and I don't have a strap option. I also don't think it would look right with a strap because it's not designed for that and it's big. It's a 30 size. So that made me think that with the Demelier London Midi Tote, I love the size of it, but it would only be handheld or crook of the arm. It comes with a strap, but I've seen reviews where the strap looks really funny and off. Like wearing that strap with that shaped bag at that size just doesn't look very flattering. So then I thought, should I 
go for the bigger one, the original size, because that can be held like this, crook of the arm, or over the shoulder as a tote, like sling over the shoulder to be hands-free because it's got the longer strap. So I am not only debating colors, but I'm also now debating the size. So if you have any input, please let me know. I don't want to force myself to just buy one. I think I'm going to wait for a color that gets me excited, but I'm also very aware that many of you are waiting for a review. So again, if you have any input, please let me know in the comments below and I will take it into consideration sincerely. But that is it you guys this was my 100 day check-in and i would love to know how you're feeling as well it's you know 100 days in time flew by in no time we're going to be talking it's the end of the year and then it's 2025 i mean the days just really do fly by and i hope that you're able to enjoy each day and I know many of us are busy and sometimes tired and overwhelmed, but as I have shared in some of my personal videos and self-care videos, I really do hope that you're taking care of yourself, you're taking breaks, you're eating well, you're sleeping as best as you can, um, you're making time for hobbies. I really hope that's what's happening. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to do this quick update. So if you enjoyed it in any way, please do give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any thoughts, questions, or comments down below, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.